Welcome to Slash Bash, where today I am bringing you another malicious compliance Reddit video. In our first story, Joe and the Flexible Working Application. I used to work in an organization that employed around 6,500 people. It was a great place that did its best to value its employees. It had a really great flexible working scheme where they did their best to accommodate everyone's wishes, providing you had a legitimate reason for requesting that shift pattern, as opposed to the one that applied for your department. I was a supervisor in a department of about 300 to 350 staff, providing 24-7 cover for customer contact. We get paid an additional 30% on top of our already decent salary for working this pattern. I had about 20 direct reports. One of those was a lad called Joe, not his real name. According to his friends, Joe was a good mate. According to his family, a saint. But I was neither of those things, I was his boss, and Joe was a bit of a dick. Now, another of the team, let's call her Sandra, had recently been granted a flexible working scheme that allowed her to have every weekend off. She was the envy of the team, because our shift pattern had us working four out of six weekends. Enter Joe. Joe is a bit of a football fan, and by a bit, I mean I'm pretty sure he would sacrifice his firstborn to give his team a better shot at winning the league. Nothing wrong with having a passion though, right? Joe and his family have apparently been season ticket holders for their club for many, many years. Now, Joe is fairly new to our department, but he's settling in. Performance-wise, he's a little below average. He requests every weekend off during the football season, but is denied. We already have the maximum number of staff permitted off on those days, Joe. Better luck next year. See if someone will swap a shift with you so you can go. And that, I thought, was the end of it. But no, Joe needs those Saturdays off. The team will lose without him there drunkenly shouting them on. The sacrifice of his child will have been in vain. Joe finds out about Sandra's flexible working scheme. Now, what the rest of the team don't know is that Sandra's dad used to look after her kids on the weekend, and he's been diagnosed with cancer and can't manage that anymore. So, naturally, work are doing everything they can to support her. Sandra has asked that her colleagues are not told about this, and she has been telling them she put stress due to workload down as the reason on her application. So Joe approaches me and says, Hey, Mr. Bossman, I want to put a flexible working application in exactly the same as Sandra's. I'm struggling with stress and uh, workload. Are you really, Joe? Are you really? I take Joe aside and double check with him that this application has nothing to do with the football matches he's been complaining about for the last three months. No? You're certain? He swears on the grave of his still living mother. Nice lady we met once. Smells like apples. Well, Joe, I say, if it was, I think putting a flexible working application in under improved work-life balance and allowing me to pursue a hobby I am passionate about would be more successful. But boss man, I'm not guaranteed to have it approved if I say that. Sandra got hers through saying stress and workload. She didn't. They'll approve mine too, it's guaranteed. Joe, I really think you should reconsider. Nope, you have to put down what I say. This is my reason. We discussed this round and round for a whole 90 minutes. I aged three decades. Joe eventually states he will put a complaint in about me if I don't put the application in. They had to be signed by managers to say we had discussed them with the employee. I give up. Joe's application goes in exactly as he wants it. By this point, he's burned through mine and the team's goodwill. But what Joe doesn't know is that I've supported staff who have genuinely been struggling before. I know what comes next. Joe gets a meeting with HR who refer him to a stress counselor to assess. Joe apparently plays it up to the counselor thinking it's part of the process. The counselor decides that our role is having too much of an adverse effect on Joe's mental health and states he needs to be transferred to another department. The only vacancies at the time were for a department paid a lower rate who still worked four out of six weekends. 
Joe quit two months later after complaining every single day about being moved. Story number two, you want the police involved? Okie dokie. So the day after Christmas, about 10 years ago, my brother called me up and asked me for some assistance setting up some of his new computer equipment. He lived down the road from a store that specialized in discount china, so naturally it was extremely busy. Busy as in cars were parked everywhere, including on the grass in front of the store, and it was impossible to see around the corner if someone wanted to pull out of the furthest exit. Unfortunately, the speed limit, 50 miles per hour, is also extremely high on the road as well. Even if you have to really try to accelerate to get to 50 miles per hour by the time you pass the store. So, I decided to play it safe and was doing roughly half the speed limit, perhaps 30 miles per hour, while going around the corner of this store. Even at this speed, of course, some guy decides to pull out without checking, and I couldn't stop in time to avoid hitting him. Now, I was driving an older Mitsubishi that already had some damage, and he had a small dent in his fender. And come on, it's still Christmas, right? So I get out of the car, take a look at the damage, and turn around to see a furious, older, red-faced gentleman in front of me. Right after I tell him that it doesn't really look like much damage, so there's no need to contact the police, he proceeds to scream in my face about how I was speeding and this is all my fault. Oh, oh no, honey. A young woman driving by herself may appear to be easily intimidated, but I was trying to be nice. If you want the police involved, let's do it, buddy. I called the non-emergency line, explained there was a very minor car accident, and that the other driver was insisting that it was my fault, so I would feel better if the police were involved. The dispatcher got my information, stopped for a moment, and then quietly thanked me for calling the appropriate number, 911 was hardly necessary, and told me that she also felt it would be safer for me if the police were dispatched. After a 30 minute wait, an officer showed up to the scene. I, not being a total moron, sat quietly in my car and waited for him to come over to me. The other driver felt it was necessary to leap out of his vehicle and run over to the officer and start screaming and gesturing wildly. I didn't catch what he said, but I did see the look on the cop's face and I was getting more and more amused. After being clearly told to get back into his car, the cop came over to me and asked me what happened. I told him what was going on and that not only had I not deliberately sped up to go the speed limit, I had actually slowed down because of how busy the business was. He nodded and went back to measure the skid marks on the road and confirmed he believed I was actually doing about 25 and complimented my thinking on safe driving in this specific situation. He then proceeded to write the other driver a ticket and the other driver pulled out of the parking lot a second time with his window down flipping me off. At this point, the cop came over to me, explained that he wrote it up as the other driver's fault for more than a thousand dollars due to the damage on his fender. He also stated that, Darlin, I don't say this often, but I believe you should take that man's insurance company for every dime you can get. Thanks for insisting we call the police. Story number three, you want to pay half the bill? Well, here's half the design. This happened a number of years ago. I worked at a small architecture firm as a designer. We specialized in high-end homes for incredibly wealthy people, the kind of wealth where they know that they can easily screw you over without consequences just because they can. We were working on this one project where it was a custom-designed home. Previous house on site had been demolished based on securing a permit with some very, very preliminary design drawings for the new place, nothing you could use to build. This client stopped paying his bills. We were assured we were getting paid, promised to the sun and the moon, and were told to keep working and finish the set. Architectural drawing set gets finished, but not issued due to the above outstanding build hours. So the client calls in a huff, spitting mad, Friday of an upcoming long weekend, demanding the drawings. He is informed that we can't release the drawings with the architect's stamp on them until we're paid. He's furious, says we're only getting half, 
what he's already paid for, and threatens to sue us for every reason in the book. The architect says, sure, we can do half, and hangs up. So we cut off half of every drawing using big white boxes. So the left half of the finished drawing on every sheet is complete, however, the right half of the sheet is completely white. This of course also blocks off the title block, where a lot of the architectural data and the stamp should be. We issue the flattened PDF and go home for the weekend taking a half day. Wouldn't you know it? This client had done a private sale of the property based on our renderings and initial design concepts and promised a complete set of architectural drawings to the buyer. The house was supposed to close that Friday. We were shielded by our boss from the blowback, so I don't actually know what all happened, but yeah, pay your architect. Here's an update. For everyone speculating as to the client, this was an independently wealthy individual who is not very well known. The tactics used by famous people definitely inspire the less famous people in their income bracket. This is John from Slash Bash. Thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed the video and want to see more of them, then hit that subscribe button. We would love for you to drop a like, share it with your friends, and we will see you in the next one.